Hello, AP Chem. This is um, chapter 10, section one. Uh, we're looking at liquids and solids and specifically at intermolecular forces. So uh, liquids and solids are unique from gases in that they have very similar compressibility, density, and behavior of particles. So in this chapter, we study how liquids and solids behave. So the thing that we need to um, keep in mind is intermolecular forces. So this is one um, topic that we have not yet talked about. Um, molecules interact in many ways. Um, there's forces inside of the molecules, and those forces are different than those that are outside of the molecules. So there's two terms that are very similar to each other, intra uh, molecular bonding is bonding that occurs inside of a covalently bonded compound. So that intra, like if introspective, um, happens within yourself. Um, so this hydrogen chlorine bond would be an intra molecular um, bonding where intermolecular bonding is interactions between particles. So this can happen um, in between atoms. It can happen in between molecules. It can also happen um, in between ions. So intermolecular forces go between the particles, kind of like interstates go between states. So um, the interstate that we're probably the most familiar with is Interstate 44 um, up north of Springfield. Um, but you can see here in the red, um, Interstate 44 is outlined. So it starts down here at Wichita Falls. So it starts out in Texas. It goes all the way through Oklahoma and Oklahoma City. Um, enters into Missouri, like right around Joplin through Springfield. And then it travels all the way up here and ends in the St. Louis area. So uh, that's kind of how I remember that intermolecular um, bonding goes in between particles is because interstates go in between states. Um, so intermolecular forces act on condensed states of matter, um, liquids and solids, but less often with gases. Uh, there are changes in uh, state are due to changes in intermolecular bonding, not the intramolecular bonding. So if we think about water um, that we put in a um, pot on the stove and we start to boil it, that water is gonna change from a liquid to a gas. And what is happening is that there are changes in the um, intermolecular forces in between the water molecules. It's not happening between the hydrogen and oxygen bonds within the water molecule. It's happening within the intermolecular forces that hold the water molecules closer together in liquid form than it does in the gaseous form. So here is a picture of water molecules. And uh, this is uh, demonstrating the differences between intramolecular forces and intermolecular forces. So here are our water molecules. There are intramolecular forces that are holding the, or that are bonding the hydrogen to the oxygen, there's an attractive force there that exists within the molecule. So intramolecular um, forces, are these are very strong forces. Also, uh, they are relatively um, close together.
where intermolecular forces, these are the attractive forces that exist between molecules. So we have all of our water molecules in these dotted lines here are showing a intermolecular force, an attractive force from this water molecule to this other water molecule. So in comparison between intramolecular forces and intermolecular forces, intermolecular forces are um, relatively weak. and the particles are relatively far apart. So, um, intramolecular forces, the um, close together where intermolecular forces are far apart. So here's some example of some data that you might be provided and you are asked to make um, conclusions based on the data and the intermolecular forces. So we have substance number one uh, has a boiling point of 87 Kelvin and substance number two has a boiling point of 165 Kelvin. So it's important to note that when you are boiling something, that means that you are going to have a liquid that is changing into a gas. And in order for this liquid to change into a gas, energy is required. Uh, so we do have some information over here. Substances number one and number two represent two different elements located in group 18, which are our noble gases. Uh, we want to know which substance, number one or number two, has stronger attractive forces between particles. So this is our intermolecular forces because we're going in between particles. And then we want to know, how can we tell? So if you think about it, uh, the stronger the attractive forces are between particles, the more energy is going to be required to overcome these forces. And so therefore, change a liquid into a gas. So because there is stronger attraction between the particles, that means that substance number two is going to have the stronger attractive forces due to the higher boiling point. So the energy is coming in that form of heat. So um, more energy is required to overcome attractive forces. The energy that we're looking at. 
is the heat. So the higher temperature for the boiling point means that more energy is used to overcome the attractive forces. So we're gonna look at some specific intermolecular forces. Uh, the first uh, intermolecular force that we're gonna discuss is the dipole-dipole interactions. So a dipole-dipole attraction is attraction of molecules having dipole moments for each other, meaning that there is a negative and a positive. Um, so this happens with polar molecules. So dipoles happen in polar molecules. So if we want to think about this, um, this being a molecule, this being a chlorine atom, this being a hydrogen atom. So chlorine is the more electronegative, um, so it's going to have that partially negative charge, and hydrogen is less electronegative, so it's going to be a partially positive um, charge. So dipole-dipole interactions are about 1% as strong as covalent or ionic bonds. So they're not very strong in the grand scheme of things, um, but there is this attraction from the positive end of one molecule to the negative end of another molecule. And you can see here in part B of this uh, diagram that molecules orient themselves to minimize repulsion and maximize attraction. So the um, negative end is attracted to the positive end, but the, this is closer together than these two negative ends because maximizing this attraction between positive and negative and minimizing the repulsion here between the negative and negative. So hydrogen bonding is a particularly strong form of dipole-dipole attraction. Uh, hydrogen bonding is unusually strong, um, involving the hydrogen atoms, which are covalently bonded to a very electronegative atom, uh, fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, um, with unshared electrons. Uh, because hydrogen is in a lot of different um, compounds, and so hydrogen bonding is sometimes mistakenly uh, labeled on things. Um, so an uh, acronym that I've uh, used for this is um, ENOUGH. Um, so the electronegative very electronegative atom, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluid. So there's two reasons for the strength of the hydrogen bonds. One is for the small size of the hydrogen atom. It allows for a closeness. Uh, there is also a large variation in the polarity. So substances with large amounts of hydrogen bonding have high boiling points compared to similar substances. So here on this um, chart, uh, it is showing a boiling point for covalent hydrides, um, and it increases with the molecular weight in group four. Uh, in other groups, uh, the first hydride has the high boiling point because of hydrogen bonding. So you notice this trend that the boiling points are steadily decreasing. But then when you get over here to these small um, molecules, these like water and hydrogen fluoride and NH3, they all have a higher boiling point. So the reason because of this higher boiling point is because there's hydrogen bonding going on. So remember that that hydrogen bonding has to happen between an electronegative atom like nitrogen and a hydrogen or oxygen and a hydrogen, or fluorine and a hydrogen. So um, hydrogen bonding, it has to happen when you have hydrogen atoms that are covalently bonded to a very electronegative atom, such as fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. So um, these molecules, um, 
do have hydrogen bonding going on. Um, sometimes you'll be asked to draw the hydrogen bonds in, um, and you want to make sure when you're drawing them in that you draw it in with a dashed line. This is not an example of hydrogen bonding because this hydrogen is not bonded to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So this would not be an example. However, this hydrogen that's bonded to an oxygen can hydrogen bond to this oxygen. That is an example of hydrogen bonding. So London dispersion forces, sometimes called LDFs, um, are relatively weak forces. These usually exist between noble gas atoms and also nonpolar molecules. So um, it is important to note what type of things uh, have these forces. So London dispersion forces, one key thing is that it happens in our nonpolar molecules. Uh, London dispersion forces also exist in compounds that have dipole, dipole, and or hydrogen bonding. So London dispersion forces, they can happen in polar molecules and nonpolar molecules. So London dispersion forces may be the most important force in large molecules of these types. London dispersion forces occur because there's a momentary electron imbalance or a temporary dipole. So it's not that the molecule is always has a permanent dipole in it, um, like we see in our polar molecules, um, but there um, can be this temporary dipole, and then that can uh, induce or cause other molecules adjacent to it to also have that same effect. So um, here are two atoms, there's no polarization. Um, you know, your electron cloud um, shows there's a greater density of electrons on this side, so it's partially negative, partially positive. I think this picture shows it a little bit better that more of the electrons are on the um, right side over here, less over here, so this would be the partially negative, and this is the partially positive. Um, this is, so temporary dipole is sometimes also called as an instantaneous dipole because it happens for an instant. It's not gonna stay that way for forever. Um, but then it can cause a dipole, an instantaneous dipole to happen in the other um, atom. So again, here is our instantaneous dipole, causes an instantaneous dipole in a neighboring atom to have that same uneven distribution in its electron cloud. Um, this like can happen also in a molecule. So this is in an atom. Um, it can also happen in a molecule like this is H2, um, hydrogen gas, and uh, so can cause an instantaneous dipole and um, that and that causes an instantaneous dipole in a neighboring molecule as well. So this um, concept of the instantaneous dipole is um, caused by polarizability. And this is the ease with which an electron cloud um, of an atom can be distorted to give a temporary dipole or an instantaneous dipole. Um, this is... Um, Definitely language that the, um, you will see um, required in some of the responses on the AP exam. Um, so note, polarizability of a molecule in the dispersion forces generally increase with the size of the atom or molecule. So if you are asked to compare two substances on the basis of their London dispersion forces, you always want to talk about the size of the 
electron cloud and the polarizability. You do not want to explain it, um, the boiling point trend um, as follows. So X has a greater or has a higher boiling point than Y because it has a greater mass. This is not an acceptable um, explanation. And the reason for that, even though a lot of times the size of the atom or molecule that does have a greater mass, that's not the reason for why the London dispersion forces happen. The London dispersion forces happen because of the electron cloud and that shift in the electrons from one part of the atom to another or one part of the molecule to another. Um, so it's not about mass. It's about the polarizability and the electron cloud. So make sure that you're using that um, information when you are asked to compare two substances. Do not reference the mass because you will not receive points um, on a question on the AP exam when it is looking at that. So um, it talks about polarizability in your textbook on page 387. Um, I know sometimes for me just to read through and um, it uh, in a text sometimes helps me to um, better understand it and put it into a context. So strength of London dispersion forces. Um, this force is often a weak force and thus it causes a low freezing point of our noble gases. The freezing point of noble gases does get higher as we go down the group because heavier atoms have more electrons and thus are more polarizable because they can develop temporary dipoles. Um, so in this explanation, we talked about the electron cloud having more electrons and that it, their polarizable can develop the te temporary dipoles. So this causes the London dispersion forces to increase as you go down a group. So just again, the, when you're writing um, answers on AP questions, they want to know about the number of electrons or the size of the electron cloud and um, that refer to the polarizability of an atom or a molecule. So boiling points reflect the London dispersion forces in nonpolar covalent compounds. Uh, so the boiling point of nonpolar covalent compounds goes up as the size of the molecule increases. More electrons means that the molecule is more polarizable and thus a higher London dispersion force and more energy is required for the state change. So here is a chart um, that uh, looks at some different molecules and the melting point or boiling point. Um, and um, it's just saying that um, the higher the boiling point, um, the molecule uh, is more polarizable. And so because it's more, more polarizable, more energy is needed to um, require for that state change. So another um, intermolecular force uh, is ion dipole forces. So just to review, ions are formed from dissolved ionic compounds um, and they are attracted to the dipoles of a polar solvent like water. So um, last year when we talked about the um, ionic compounds dissolving in water. Um, we talked about the positive and negative ions splitting apart. I think we talked about this again this year in chapters four and 11. Um, 
So the strength of the ion dipole attraction is one of the main factors that determines the stability of ionic compounds in water. So how strong this attraction is from the positive ion to the negative end of water. Um, so the, what the ion dipole forces are is the attractive force between the ion and the polar molecule. Um, and so um, there you will see attractions happen between here. And then the hydrogen end is the positive end of water, so you see attractive forces between the anion, like so. So anytime you are representing um, intermolecular forces, you always wanna do it with a dotted line because it's not a bond, so it's not gonna be a solid line. This table just kind of reviews the intermolecular forces and then looks at the strength of the intermolecular forces. So um, London dispersion forces are probably the um, the weakest and these are um, in all molecules and atoms. So if you're asked to list what um, intermolecular forces are present, you're always going to say London dispersion forces. Dipole dipole um, interactions are only um, in polar molecules, and these are probably the um, the a little bit stronger than our London dispersion forces. Hydrogen bonding, um, molecules containing a hydrogen bonded to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. So this is showing hydrogen bonding between water molecules. These are gonna be a little bit stronger than your dipole dipole. And then ion dipole are um, even stronger than that. And this is a mixture of ionic compounds and polar. Uh, compounds, and those are probably the strongest out of the um, intermolecular forces. Okay, so dipole-dipole attraction, um, we kind of talked about this, but they are having uh, dipole mo moments for each other. They're negative to a positive. They're about 1% as strong as ionic bonds in the molecules orient themselves to minimize repulsion and maximize attraction. So here are um, some of our dipole-dipole attraction. Um, ion dipole, hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole, uh, an ion-induced dipole, a dipole into induced dipole and then just dispersion forces. So practice, um, determine the types of intermolecular forces shown in the substances you would experience. So um, you want to think about like what type of um, molecule these are um, to determine what types there are. So Everything we know is going to have London dispersion forces. So H2, um, take a minute, think about what type of, is it going to have London dispersion forces? Is it going to have dipole dipole? Is there going to be hydrogen bonding going on? Is there going to be ion dipole going on? Well, hydrogen um, molecules are just going to have London dispersion forces. Um, HCl, um, we know it's going to have London dispersion forces. Um, is there going to be a dipole um, in that molecule? Well, there is a large electronegativity difference between hydrogen and chlorine, so um, there is also going to be a dipole-dipole um, intermolecular force there. And then in iron atoms, what type 
of um, intermolecular forces would we have in this? Well, there's going to be some metallic, um, some metallic is just in between iron atoms, there's going to be metallic um, going on there, like metallic bonding, um, and then there's going to be London dispersion forces. H2S, um, we know that there is going to be London dispersion forces. Now, thinking about the placement of hydrogen and sulfur um, on the periodic table, we need to think about, is there a um, dipole going on there? And think about, um, would those dipoles cancel or not? Um, they're not, so there is going to be dipole dipole and there is going to be a linen dispersion force. And then in SIC, um, what type of intermolecular forces are there there? Um, there's going to be covalent network, um, going on there. And then CO2 is just going to be London dispersion forces. So take a minute and look at these substances and rank these substances from the lowest boiling point to the highest boiling point and then justify your answers. Welcome back. Here are you. Here's the ranking of the lowest boiling point to the highest boiling point. So, uh, fluorine is going to have the lowest boiling point, and then the highest boiling point is going to be um, between germanium atoms. Okay, and that concludes our. Uh, notes for intermolecular forces. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.